Hello and welcome to an open source live code hangout. Today we'll be working in the Godot engine, working on an open source project here. I've got ChatGPT to help us out. This is um, a piano practice app. So far, uh, we don't really have a name for it, sort of. I've got a couple of ideas working on that, but uh, the general goal is to help people learn piano technique. We need to learn piano chords, piano scales, chord inversions, things like that, intervals, and we need to know them in our minds and our hands. So I need to know, I need to understand theoretically how, how a chord is structured, but also just Think of it and put my hand there on the keyboard. <laughs> muscle memory, that's the trick. And muscle memory takes, well both, I guess, take repetition. It seems that muscle memory takes, it's slower to develop, it takes more repetition perhaps. I don't know how they compare exactly. But the goal of this app is to help us with those repetitions. It's like a, you know, it's like an exercise. We have some constraints that we're gonna include in the app. One is we won't branch out into repertoire, like the songs. We won't uh, teach songs or sight reading. There's really great apps for that already. And I don't really want to compete. I don't have the time or resources to develop a competing app of the caliber and quality of the ones that already exist. But I did notice there's a gap, a little bit of a gap in terms of learning technique and focusing on just repeating scales, the correct fingerings, you know, how do I do a C major arpeggio over two octaves? What, you know, what is the fingering for that versus a single C major arpeggio in one octave? All right, so that's the main constraint. We're just focusing on technique. Another, um, I would say constraint here is that we will not be detecting audio using a microphone and in figuring out which keys were pressed because it's incredibly complicated to do that. Unreliable, frankly. Uh, I don't have the time or resources to figure that out. I would need to find an off the shelf product or project that did that, a library. And the results are frankly just disappointing in apps that have tried that. Um, Simply Piano, Flowkey, I think come to mind, they, they support the microphone input, but they their support people even just recommend getting a MIDI cable, hooking your piano up via Bluetooth MIDI or a MIDI cable to the tablet or the device. So that's what we'll be using. We'll have, we have a uh, MIDI input, it listens for your key presses. That way it just gets them. It doesn't need any sound. There's no mistaking which key was pressed. It's just digital information. So that is a constraint. It's a significant constraint. Because honestly, you know, as just like a person uh, who's picking up the piano or whatever, it, it, you know, I can hear chords. I can hear multiple notes played at the same time. So it seems like computers should be able to do that also. But when I think about it a little bit more, uh, it took me uh, a while, and I'm still working on ear training to be able to distinguish certain intervals. Even when there's like three notes playing, I can't always tell if it's a major or minor chord or what the chord is. I don't have perfect pitch, of course. And um, So if we stop and like listen and think about it for a little bit, we might even get more of an intuition about how complicated it is actually to to listen to a sound and pick the notes apart especially when these are built on acoustical relationships where each note contains the notes above it in essence it's called the harmonic series and it's one of the things that makes it really difficult to tease chords apart there are mathematical techniques for doing that in spectral analysis but to break down the f constituent frequencies is one thing but then then to take the next step and figure out you know, which of these are actual key presses, which of these are the harmonic series from a, from another key press, I think it's a little bit more difficult. 
uh, any case, <laughs> this is a big side, a big way of saying, hey, we're just going to work with MIDI here. That's one constraint. And we're just going to work with technique. But that said, there's a lot we can do. <laughs> well, our backlog's already growing. So we're going to, we've got an interactive piano display. Well, let's take a look at that again. Okay, I'll move it over here. P interactive piano display, check. Uh, we highlight the keys when you press them, check. Uh, finger number display. No, we don't have that. That hasn't come up yet. I think I'll work on this today, perhaps. Let me think about it. Uh, theory display. Uh, text display for chords, scales, and other musical concepts. We're getting towards this. This is the key value proposition here. Is it'll say, play a C major chord. And I'll be like, oh, okay. And then play an F major. Play a D minor, D major. And it'll give me feedback right away. And it'll measure the time it took to where it displayed that and said, hey, play a C major, and then how long it took me to play that C major. Or where it lights up a key and I press it, and how fluidly I play these, how fast I can play this triad. It's not about speed, but accuracy. And progress tracking is a big thing. So I want to make sure that I'm improving my technique. Uh, but I want to start slow. And eventually, fluidly and smoothly, work my way up. And that's where even more subtle technique comes into play that, you know, it's really important to see a piano teacher, get into a piano class. They'll help you with body mechanics and things like that. So this is just a supplementary tool, not meant to replace a piano teacher, but it's helping us with a little bit of the theory and muscle memory again. So yeah, the progress tracking, and we might have like some levels, uh, for example, just starting with note identification, play the C, play a G, you know, uh, knowing your accidentals. That's already a bit good foundation. It takes a bit. <laughs> it doesn't uh, come naturally. We have to learn these labels. And then the fact that each key actually has multiple names. <laughs> uh, this is this is B, this is C, but this is actually also B sharp. And... Um, depending on the context and that's kind of a rare example but nonetheless it's called inharmonic spellings in where we encounter those first with the black keys they can be both a sharp or a flat in any case um, just naming letters is one thing and then intervals like play a fifth uh, right uh, from a c play the fifth of c and having this um these other intervals fifth fourth those types of things so those are we want to just not have to think about that but that's really important because as you start to progress in music and particularly in piano uh, the, you'll encounter these concepts quite a lot and they can aid in your interpretation and understanding of repertoire and pieces you're learning and so again the key is not about speed but smoothness and accuracy that's the deal don't rush just play smooth and accurately all right so um that's where we're at and we got several um a bit more depth um, in-depth description here in the readme of the project if you just want to check us out on github I'll link the repository here soon to be named I see my blue button let me just take take a look here all right uh, <laughs> so we'll come back to this these are not in today's session I'm going to focus just today on this Godot project. All right. So I was thinking, let me take a look at the backlog, but um, audio feedback. So this is a complicated one. Now we don't necessarily want to aim for audio out. Uh, sorry, sorry. Input, like where I will recognize if you have an acoustic piano, for example, this tool won't really be useful for you. You need a MIDI piano, MIDI controller keyboard. There's a lot of them, though, and they're not very expensive. And we might support touch input as well. So for people who don't. Have MIDI, we'll try to have your back there. You have to have a touch device though, of course. Um, but audio output, so when you press a key, do you hear a note? That would be kind of nice, but we won't do that today. Uh, we started the game design document draft, and that's actually here in the repo. Um, background and foreground color. I just put a green on there, I kind of like green. Living in Finland, so we have a lot of forest here, like forest, kind of forest green, it looks like. Finger number indicators for efficient key presses. So this is what I mentioned. We might start here, but it doesn't matter what 
fingers I use to press these keys right now. And in fact, the, there's no way in MIDI to, to tell <laughs> which key I'm using. I can press this with any finger. I'm just kind of going through each of my fingers. I don't have a camera here, but uh, it doesn't matter. But when you start playing triads, for example, well, there are common fingerings. So here I'm using my pinky, my middle finger, and my thumb. But another approach would be pinky, middle finger, pointer finger, and thumb can be up here for the extensions. Uh, this is jazz. This is jazz grip, and this is classical grip with the pinky, middle finger, and thumb. And so that's where you start learning the finger numbers. So uh, I'll have to remember those. We'll ask GPT, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, accounting on the left hand from thumb. Both of them count from finger, left thumbs. One, two, three, four, five. So on my left hand, I play one, three, five for the classical group. So let's think about that. Let's do that today. Oh, what, so the idea will be, it'll say play C major. Let's show me some text here, play C major. And maybe it'll show me the notes. One, three, five. All right, one. Depending on which hand I'm using, of course, that's another point. Um, so let's try this. This is essentially before we can do the metronome. But finger number indicators, you need some reason to have to display them. So we, and this kind of begs a feature. which I actually didn't create an issue for. So we're gonna ask ChatGPT here. We'll start with fifths. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, let's just start with uh, uh, the note name. So we're gonna create a GitHub issue with the goal of making a simple lesson to display a note name. Waits for the player to press that note. Uh, set the foundation for players to memorize the key names uh, of the, on the keyboard, including the inharmonic spellings. Uh, you know, let's see, maybe we'll, perhaps we'll play a little chime or a little sound effect if they get it right or wrong, some kind of Yeah, it's a bit verbose, but kind of um, try not to use too many filler words as well, but get the latent space of the model activated. So sometimes it'll go a little bit beyond and help me think a little bit outside of my idea. Hmm. Ectoplasm. So good. So good. Interactive lesson feature for piano app. 
I should have mentioned the goal of having interactive lesson feature is to set the foundation for other lessons, more advanced lessons. And we don't need to figure out, for example, a data format. Probably I'm going to just use a primitive data format, not MIDI or any uh, music XML at this point. It'll be a bespoke format that is going to be based on lists and dictionaries or whatever the equivalents are in Godot. And the reason there'll be a list is because you'll typically need to play multiple things or a lesson will consist of multiple items or it could be randomly generated until you sort of gain proficiency. That could be one approach. You know, and even these individual lessons could have their, they could be basically mini games come to think of it. So yeah, flesh it out a little bit more, um, turn it into uh, sort of a minigame foundation framework, but the minigames can have different behavior. They don't have to all be in the same uh, functionality. This was a pretty good one. Display the note on the screen, NMRX spelling support, media feedback, visual and or auditory feedback, uh, user choice for feedback type. Okay, that's a bit, bit of a, an additional feature where we would need some kind of setting uh, lesson structure, create a lesson script that randomly selects a note and helps it, displays it to the player. Key detection, implement logic to detect when the player presses a key and whatever matches the displayed note. So we already have signals for this. <clears throat> so we could use the signals, tie it into the, guess the, uh, or press the, press the number, press the, <laughs> key minigame. All right, we'll, we'll copy this. We'll, we'll go for that. It was actually a pretty decent issue. <clears throat> Description. Yeah, we'll just take some of the parts out. You know, it's GPT stuff. But it saves a lot of time and it's, you know, I think 80% what I'm intending to do and I don't have to or expect other people to follow it verbatim. Although that can be 
confusing to get an issue and say, here's what you, the requirements are, but actually that's not a requirement. Some of these requirements are already met. And it looks like we got a little bit of a slowdown, but that's nonetheless uh, more or less ready to roll. So let's check. A... Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so. No range doesn't matter here. I'm just not checking for octave. I think I might get a little sick here doing some electrolytes. <laughs> Social and competitive elements. Wow, this is really great. This is cool, associative colors. <clears throat> I'll just pop them in here as we track of those all right now I just don't want to get too complicated too fast so gotta think here for a second I don't even really have a way of loading in a mini game so we won't worry about that too much So what we have here, if I go to the 2D display, we have got our background is green. Piano display is anchored here. It just essentially renders it. It gets the screen height and width and renders the keys along the bottom. I've got a note display here that's kind of, uh, it's anchored here a little bit offset that. So when I play, you know, you you see the note names right here above the thingamabob, above the keyboard thing. And the more you press, you know, it'll take up more Oh, but they have to be different, so it's only showing one of each, right? So, there we go. Now we get lots of them. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll create a new... Okay, a new note suggestion. So, it should have our current... This conversation should have our current code base. What I can do is hop over to the scripts.
I think it should uh, perhaps emit a signal. We can listen for these signals. It'll emit a signal if it's they press the right or wrong key. We can listen for that signal in another component, like the one that plays the sound. So just giving this is the core this MIDI um, MIDI note info that comes out in these signals uh, and this is handling all the MIDI logic so everything is kind of subscribing to these it's the basic backbone of uh, the app and it has the note names there uh, this I might move these note names to a const somewhere since we're using them in several places Okay, so it looks like it gave me a GitHub issue. <laughs> so it's getting a bit confused. Perhaps, you know, it wasn't very clear there. Uh, so it's using the previous context. And um, now I'll just make the pragmatic ask so it understands what I'm aiming at. We're using GD script and we do have uh, some context window, but even the um, app might not keep track of the conversation across days. I'm not sure how, you know, it's a little bit of a black box. Here we go to implement the note suggestion feature in GD script. You'll create a script that randomly selects a note, displays it to the player, and checks if the correct key is pressed. The script will uh, interact with the, so we get a little bit of hard to read there, wit. Uh, still, anyway, uh, with the MIDI handler to receive MIDI inputs. Here's a step by step implementation. See, we're, we're repeating these note names. I would like to move it to like a global const. But here, note suggestion GD. Our current note. It'll emit notes. And then we have select and display note. Implement a node select and display. Define a function to randomly select and display a note. This example assumes you have a label node to display the note. Okay, we'll figure that part out. Handle the MIDI event. So already listen, connecting it to the uh, private method. And this is actually Godot or GD script like three. I'll have to fix that. We don't pass now references, uh, string references to functions. We actually, our string, that's not a reference. It's just, we don't pass string values now. We actually pass a reference to the um, function value. That's good. So you get better type help and from your IDE. And then when it's ready, we're going to randomize that and connect uh, the listener. So it's go oh, in the random number generator. So it's essentially duplicating this ready function here, but putting the randomizer in front. Yeah. And selecting display note. Okay. So it looks like we're going to need then a new scene essentially. And the scene 
is going to be very similar to this note display. It's essentially, if we open the note display scene here, by the way, the docs is where we have our game design document <clears throat> here. If you're interested in the kind of overall uh, direction of the project, this is kind of our guide. So let's go ahead and I think we'll create a new scene. Let's take a quick look at the note display scene. And I think it was already open. Here it is. So it's just a 2D node with a label, notes label. And we will call it in the other scene, suggest note suggestion or something like that. Before I refactor this to a global cons, I'm just going to try to get the thing working. That way, you know, this these note names don't change. <clears throat> So we will create a new scene. <laughs> Dang, sorry, I tried to hit the mute and sneeze out, but <laughs> didn't work very good. <laughs> Note to suggestion, starting with a 2D scene. <laughs> And then we'll add a child label. We might do rich text at some point, then you can change the colors and stuff, but we'll focus. We're keeping it very simple. And we will call this note name label. That should be good enough. We'll attach a script to the um, parent node kind of the difference here what that means built-in script I don't know and we'll look for example at the note display how we initialized that because it didn't uh, really tell us so note suggestion script so note suggestion .gd is right here extends node 2d this is just saying node Interesting. Let me double check what the type is. I could just say node. Hmm. What's the difference? So we don't have on node we don't have any properties, not even an XY, but on a node. This is a 2D node, so we have things like the transform. I need the transform. Perhaps, perhaps not. Let me just try that. If I remove, I should have created a branch. I'll do that real quick. Um, so yeah, if I just switch this to a node, to, so it matches the GD script, matches the scene tree. Kind of weird that those can be inconsistent, but all right. Change type just to node. Let's see what happens. Can I run the app there? Can I position it still in the parent app? No, see, that's the thing. We lose the positioning. So it needs to be a node 2D. Can I undo that and run that? Yeah, so now we have the positioning back. So, okay. I could probably manually uh, create the positioning in the code, but we'll change the type to node 2D and then I think honestly the script should be consistent. So the note display should also extend node 2D, <laughs> that way we get the helpers and uh, other like life cycle methods from that. Okay, so we will ignore that and we'll bring in these signals to so the note suggestion. So here, these are empty. Note correct, note incorrect, note names. Constants, I usually follow the Python convention. You can even say const, right? 
DVD, it does have consts. Um, selecting display notes. We've got a helper function here. I'll just copy that out. And then on ready and if MIDI note in. Yeah, so basically from here. And we have some, looks like some errors here. So it's writing. Ah, yeah. So it's writing kind of GD script three. I have to work through a couple of these things. But for example, this just takes self and an actual reference to the method. So there we go. And this looks like note names not discovered. Oh, yes, yeah, so this I changed the thing. And there we go. And there's that. Yeah, so those are just, I introduced those bugs, but I like this convention. I don't know if it's a GD script convention or if there are many of those, but where I work uh, in the Python ecosystem, costs usually your uppercase to sort of signal to your team members and yourself that this uh, will not change in addition to annotating it here and perhaps it predates anyway i'm trying to think yeah that's just one way of signaling okay <clears throat> so i need to come back to this ready function we have on midi note on which is registered now there it is and then in the ready function we're also going to randomize I don't know this is and select and display note now the part that was missing is that select and display note note label text I was thinking about that note label if I just rename it note label note label note I'm just hitting save That might work. So how do we get a reference to that? No names is not declared in the current scope. So can we clear these out? And just try running it real quick, see if I get any errors. Nope, no errors. Cool. And uh, the main thing is it's running the main scene. I need to now go back to the main uh, scene here and instantiate this note suggestion scene. For example, here or it doesn't matter this is the z more or less the z order uh oh it's going on with gd with godot it's freezing up on me godot come on come back to life Oh boy. There's probably an error in my scene and it just blew up. <laughs> I think it's that I didn't have a reference, a proper reference to that uh, label. But uh, to fix that, I need to close good dough. So. <laughs> Different. But if you want to check out some music stuff, I can't quite hear it. Annoying. Working on that in a separate, separate stream. Alright, so we'll run this. I'm opening up the Godot. Oh. Open up the project and bring it back over. Hopefully, hopefully. All right, so I'll just take a quick look at the note display and see how we got a reference notes label. Label. In Git node, okay. 
in the ready thing. So note display label. I think we'll have to do that. I'm gonna try running it though. Think for a second here. Cause I mean, I like this approach. If you can just reference it. So you can have a label, but I think we have to do no label. And then we get a reference. Equals. Here. Wow, uh, here actually. What the heck? And it's just note label here. <laughs> and I have to say, this is a var variable. It will change. Then, where is this displayed? I wonder. Well, can I put something in there? And then. The other thing is in the main scene, now we have everything stacked up here, main, ah, uh, okay. So here's the, that was the problem. Uh, it crashed and it didn't, uh, didn't add no suggestion like I was hoping. So put it there, save. And now we have a note suggestion. And how do I how do I just get one specific node, right? There it is. Or I suppose what I could have done is select this, transform it. And then just move it here, for example. <clears throat> Save that. See if it displays something. There it is, C-sharp. Okay, here it goes. Boing. Then it picked another one. Wow. Now if I don't, don't get it right, ah, still pick another one. But it's working every time I press at least. Yeah, oh, here we are. It's working. It's telling me correct and correct. <laughs> nice. Now... If it's incorrect, it shouldn't play. Yeah, uh, so it shouldn't select another. So that's the first step. So let me get. Uh, let me pause here for a moment. So what I'm going to do is first make it a little bit bigger, so we can kind of see. So for that, label. Settings, I think we needed. Then I can edit that, and the font can be like 42. That's good. There we are. Let's see. All right, I'll take a quick break here, refresh my drink and mind, and I think we're gonna be really close to having this done. We've got the UI elements there. Just need to make a couple of changes to the logic, but so we'll paste this in the chat GPT to say, here's the changes I made. Uh, it's behaving this way, but I'd like it to behave that way. What do I need to change? Yeah, pretty straightforward process. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, not too long. So we're doing good, making progress. 45 minutes in, took a little bit of setup, a little bit of explaining, a little bit of thinking, planning. Don't just dive straight into the code, you know. But uh, now we're already here. So I think I can, I can sort of commit this. I'll call it WIP. That way, I'll get this stuff up here on GitHub. I'll link the um, branch in the chat. We will link the pull request to this issue number 14. I'll mark it as a draft. That way, all of the uh, changes are here. The delta, the diff, you can see exactly what changed. Uh, also, you know, in the scenes, what we changed in the scene, we added another scene reference. Here's the script. And uh, yeah even if or when we merge this pull request it'll still be available historically on github so if anyone's checking this video out and wants to see what we did here you go jump straight to the to the source okay now so what i have in the conversation here with gpt is a little different it suggested some code i mostly followed that i had to make a couple of changes i don't think this was going to work but i had to make the references so i'm just going to paste back in the note suggestion gd i'll say like for shared reference with minor modifications and it, it'll probably say, oh, great, looks good. Here's the things you changed. Maybe it'll notice some bugs. One of the bugs is not a code bug. It's not like a syntactic bug. It's a sort of a semantic bug. It's behaving wrong. It's refreshing the note even when I play the wrong one. And what we want to do is just wait until you play the right one. I was thinking a bit offline is like I'd like to have that audio feedback perhaps during this pull request I've got headphones over here I can hook it and uh, where should we get those there's some free sounds on freesound.org that might be a good one or we could synthesize the sound here um, using VCB rack or something like that I don't have a lot of experience with just uh, sound design and synthesis for sound effects at least but or actually we've got, uh, I don't know if this would be interesting, but I've got this uh, uh, plug data app that <laughs> I've really been itching to learn. This is really cool uh, thing. It's this modular patching environment based on pure data. Uh, you can bring in like instruments like, um, oh, oh, like an e-piano and stuff like that and make sound effects and stuff. In order to do that, though, I'd have to hook up this stream and you want like a DAC, because I think control one DAC and uh, make output happen. And then I would need like MIDI, some kind of what does this need input? It doesn't that's one thing. It doesn't tell you what it needs, does it? <clears throat> but that would be a whole nother step. So we might we might do something like that. A piano or a pluck a piano would be co cool, perhaps. And these probably need just a a bang. Which one's a bang? This is something I'm studying a little bit on my own. Bang. And then a MIDI note. I don't know what that piano takes though. We 
neighborhood just has its own thing. And heck, this could be the source of the piano sounds as well. I don't know if this is actually going to work. Bang. If anything comes out of it. Okay, it's a loading a sound font. Yeah, so again, this is um, not what I'll get into right away, but you can kind of see the direction. We might take this in other games. Uh, I will... I would like to get into the sound design side of games and videos. I try to do as much of that as I can open source using open source tools, but it doesn't always work. <clears throat> um, I can share things easier open source, but I've had, I've had pretty great difficulty making open audio with open source tools and video with open source tools. I've tried for like about 15 years and it just inevitably ends up with frustration. VCB rack is about the best experience I've had. Uh, where I've been able to make music with it and stuff. So we'll come back to that later. All right, so now we did get a response. The note suggestion GD script looks well structured and functional for the intended purpose. It randomizes the note selections, displays them, and checks for correct user inputs. Here are a few additional suggestions and considerations. Feedback enhancement. Consider adding a visual feedback in addition to the console prints. Yeah, we need that. Delay before a new note. <clears throat> yeah, we should do that. Scorekeeping. Yeah, we should do that. Street count. Yeah, we should do that. Here's an example of how you might implement visual feedback for the correct and incorrect notes. <clears throat> so we have this on uh, function on MIDI note on. So we've got a note suggestion on MIDI note on. If MIDI note pitch class current note <clears throat> signal handle node label modulate ooh wow <laughs> i like that mm, but it won't work do we need a different type of label for that i wonder what's the problem did you mean to use green Ah, uh, const. Ooh, wow, look at that. It has a lot of colors there. And modulate color red. Now that does beg the question, uh, should it wait until they press that one correctly? I guess it's just easy as just moving that into here only if they play the correct one. Okay, so let's try it now. Let's see the modulation happening. Hopefully. Uh oh, uh oh, we have red text, red text. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> Same problem. Let's stop. And it was hot. It was highlighting that time. R E D. Ooh, cool. We had Rebecca Purple. Dark Goldenrod. Just go with the basic red. How it looks on a green background. Hmm. G sharp. Green. New one. F sharp. G. B. Oh, where is B? Oh, I'm not looking. Oh, I hit C. I was so close. D. D. And that's another thing to do it by touch. <laughs> C, C sharp, F, F sharp, A sharp. Oh my gosh, F. No, nope, didn't got it disoriented, but it's working. It's working. D, C, D, 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 C, 
A sharp, boom, F, C, C, F sharp, oh my gosh, C, D, G, A, A sharp, B, and you can just hit in your, wow, okay, this is cool, <laughs> ah, but, <clears throat> I just noticed it's staying green. Okay, so that's another little bug. We'll fix that real quick. Fix that real quick. How do we do the delay? Reset the color. D sharp. Oh, that's a tricky one. Yeah, there it goes. Ah, so yeah, we do want a little bit of a, a little bit of a delay. Okay. Ah, but wait, what happens if I press the red one just real quick? Yeah, yeah, it's not working. Nice. Okay. Randomizes the seed or internal state of the random number generator. Well, oh, current implementation. Interesting. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. No suggestion. All right. Using the yield with create timer. This method is more concise and doesn't require adding a timer nor node to your scene tree. You can simply use the yield statement to wait for specified duration. So in there, if it's correct, do that, and yield, get tree, create timer. Wow, timeout waits for one second. And it doesn't know about my local changes, but you know, we'll kind of, we'll do that. See if that works now. Yeah, so I was thinking this, this is not how you do it anymore. Yield is removed and go to four. Use a wait. Ooh. I like it. A lot of languages are getting this little. Uh, oh wait, handling, this is weird though. Is await a method? <laughs> so firstly, all right. Yeah, I didn't think so. That would mean, then what do I do? <clears throat> See, no, it's not really happening yet. Um, okay, so let's go back to yield and I'll just paste this in, this error. Text. I wish I could copy this. This is kind of weird. How do I copy this? Yield was removed. Here's a wait instead. Errors. Okay, you can copy it there. <clears throat> Let's see if it's got context about Godot or G script 4. Oh, wait a minute. Those are not what I was expecting. Now I want to copy this one.
Okay, there it is. Found it. So it's the uh, same. Refresh. All right, so I figured it out. So you have to hit that and then you can copy the error messages. Good. In good old four, the yield function has been replaced with the await keyboard. Now this whole conversation I did mention we're using good old four, but GDScript is just, uh, or sorry, GPT does just kind of get a bit uh, hung up on the old, old G GDScript apparently in this case. Hmm. So we do need a timer. I suppose it can go here and I need to use it. Weird. Why doesn't it work? I say copy. Like all. Ah, oh, you have to do that and you can copy it. Okay. That's not very meaningful error to me. I expected the identifier. What is this? What's the unexpected identifier? GPT's have a bit of load, a bit of server load, it looks like. The message uh, you're encountering indicates a syntax issue in your script. In Godot 4.0 later, await cube, where it is used for asynchronous processing, but the way the asynchronous function is defined needs to be correct. Let's correct the implementation. Correcting an asynchronous function. Godot, the asynchronous function, is typically a function that returns a GGScript function state. This automatically occurs when you use a wait inside of a function. To implement the delay functionality, you can use a timer. Here's the correct way to set up an asynchronous delay uh, function in Godot 4.0. Add a timer node to your scene. All right. Setting up the timer in your body ready function. All right, so we will add a timer node. There you go. And the delay timer is we'll call it delay timer. And we set up the wait time one shot auto start false connect it on delay time timeout all right i really have no idea what all this is doing i sort of do but uh yeah we're getting reference to it here setting up some initialization stuff and this will be a uh, reference to a method on self I mean, there's no way I would have known to do this is what I'm trying to say. I can kind of grok it a little bit. Hmm. And then we'll have to delete this is not All right. No, queue free. Uh, 
and we'll wait the delay timer will start it and await it in here that goes here now I think we're good to go um, delay timer timeout if needed okay so we probably don't need to this line okay let's play it see if it slows down so a yeah yeah and if I play the wrong one so good oh I'm getting a bit tired I don't want to lose so right now this is a great stopping point honestly I'm tired and uh, we have the basic stuff happening uh, this can actually oh I see you have to instantiate it in the ready function probably okay okay we'll leave everything alone uh, although these uh, this should be a constant one last thing uh, I don't know if this is asking too much let's commit this good status Uh, good we did a good job today yeah I'll just go to bed one hour on the money almost on the mark later we'll move this it's a little refactoring thing it's not a deal breaker to have these it's not likely that they'll go out of sync but nonetheless you know if you're repeating this constant values you should kind of be a little bit careful about that we'll have to look at other inharmonic spellings like how to handle the flats and sharps and things like that as the project grows but hey we made great progress today so in summary today's live code hangout we have implemented note guessing let me just actually um Do a real quick recap and uh, hmm. if it'll run, maybe it won't run. Let's stop. Uh, Godot froze again. Hello. Yeah. I mean, I don't suppose Unity and Unreal and those would be without crashes as well. I should be patient with this stuff, but uh, having a little bit of flashbacks with the open source music creation software and video editing software, it just crashes randomly. It's uh, missing key features and functionality. And uh, I spend more time uh, like, well, fighting to get the tool to even work. Like Linux audio is all so historically, uh, messy and there's different competing audio engines and things like pulse audio and jack and pipewire and maybe one to rule them all eventually but uh, a lot of times i couldn't even get my tool to run without it crashing so this is sort of feeling like that having a couple good old crashes in uh, this session you know not like a deal breaker of course it's open source and I'm I should be appreciative of having a, a nice open source game engine but what I'm trying to highlight and without hopefully sounding too ungrateful is that you know creativity is a fragile thing and um, trying to just get something done uh, is really the goal and trying to be creative and produce and share and uh, it can be frustrating it can actually be debilitating or even stifle creativity when your tools uh, just don't work for you as a brief aside it would be really nice if uh, like these open source audio and uh, video editing tools in particular could kind of come together and unify at least consolidate and focus on really building something uh, one common really mature uh, project we have a, a bunch of open source video editors and uh, at least five maybe 
um, that are under semi-active development, it would be nice to not just spread out so thinly on such a complicated endeavor. Uh, open source game engines, I don't know if there's a lot of com competition in that environment, but uh, Godot seems to have resourcing behind it, like the Blender project as well. Maybe these are more successful endeavors and able to build something mature over the course of time. We'll see. But so far, I, I have had an overall great experience with Godot. It's a, a nice engine. I don't know how it compares with uh, Unity, probably not, or Unreal, of course, probably not uh, on the same tier uh, in terms of what it does. It's a very lightweight engine. But yeah, so I'll just take a quick uh, moment, gather my thoughts. We will um, summarize what we did today. Thanks for hearing my little uh, tangent there. Hopefully I didn't sound too uh, like I'm complaining or too bitter or cynical or anything, but these are genuine concerns and struggles I've faced, so probably other people are facing them as well. All right, I'll be right back and we'll do a summary. Welcome to a recap of today's live code hangout. Today we've been working on our piano practice app using the Godot engine and GPT-4 to help work out some code challenges and basically as a tutor, frankly, I don't know much about GDScript and Godot and everything else, so it's an invaluable helper. Here's the status of the project. We have a piano that displays on the bottom and it displays a key and it would like me to press that key on the keyboard on a MIDI equipped keyboard. When I press the right key, it turns green. Here's the key I pressed and it prompted me for another. If I press the wrong key, it turns red. Here's the key I pressed and you can see here and it waits until I press the right key. And then uh, you just continue that and it's essentially, whoops, you know, it's just a training app, so you can help, helps you memorize the keyboard and hopefully builds muscle memory and familiarity with the keys. This is also the basis of potentially other types of mini games. For example, we might want to teach people the intervals, or in case you notice that it was right and wrong at the same time there because I played an interval that was quite an interesting side uh, an edge case so it went on to the next letter um, in any case we were only focusing on a single letter the basic thing you got to learn on the piano is where are the keys what are their names and why do they have two names oh man why does this have two names it's uh, just the way it is you gotta remember sharps and flats but yeah Great progress. Let's take a quick look at the code. Uh, our main scene consists now of note suggestion, note display, and a piano display. When I look at it at the 2D, uh, those are all just rendering in here. I've got the note suggestion node kind of up here in the middle, sort of, and note display a little bit down here because it, it l displays multiple notes potentially, so they kind of list out. Uh, I'll have to work to improve the layout and maybe later. And then here's our piano display. This one will automatically render the piano keys along the bottom of the key uh, screen so it gets the screen height and width and calculates things and stuff. I might also do that with these in the future. Today, uh, we already had the piano display and note display working from the previous session, so we focused in here on the note suggestion node. So I'll just go straight over here. The note suggestion node has a label and I just put some text here to uh, adjust the font size and it's kind of a big font size it's um, we should probably also mention hey press this key I'll improve that later and a delay timer so if you notice when I press the key if I press the correct key there's a little bit of a timer before it goes to the next one that'll give us enough time to put a little sound effect there as well but we didn't add that to it today but it's that visual feedback um, otherwise it was instantaneously switching to the next letter which is in a way visual feedback but it's nice to have something some little pause there uh, we'll figure out and tune it you know, later if it needs to just transition faster than one second but be 
for that let's just look at um, how it works currently and we'll take a quick look at the GD script it's not very many lines of code uh, we are communicating across the app with signals and we have a basic MIDI handler script this is the core of, that's listening for MIDI events and sending signals when we get a MIDI event on or off MIDI note on and off the MIDI standard when you press the keyboard down it sends MIDI on and when you release it it says MIDI note off and there's a bit of more information that's associated there <clears throat> that we include in that signal and we map it to these um, note names the MIDI representation is numeric and uh, we on the display and um, theoretically we have letters that we associate with those uh, in, in some traditions, uh, solfage is another example. And we had some debugging information, but this already existed. So just to show you where we're getting the information from. So if I go back to this note suggestion, uh, we're, we're going to listen for that. And we're going to send our own signals here. And these will be used later um, that I can, for example, play a sound effect or something like that. The, when you play the right note, it'll play one, a piano chime or some something that will just be, you won't be confused that it's, uh, it's not going to be the note you played, but it'll be like doo -doo -doo and or doo -doo -doo if you play the wrong note, something like that. We'll figure that out later. We're duplicating this note names list. I'm going to refactor that so we'll have a global constant because these won't really change uh, and we're having, we have them listed in several places. So we're just getting, we're going to get a reference here to the note label and we start out with a uh, no current note. And then we have some helper functions. It's select and display note. It'll uh, pick a random note, uh, random index value from this size, from the length of this, this list. And uh, it'll set the current note to that index value it just retrieved. So um, this is going to take the list and grab the nth item from that list that was based on generated by this. Um, it's going to modulate the color to white. And this is to basically reset that. So we have a white on green background. Later I'll um, set the perhaps some color themes up so people can pick their own color combinations. But you need contrast. So we have a darker background and light text. And um, that's essentially what we've got. Forest green and white text. We could do an off-white like a gray or something like that. And then it just sets the text label to that current note as well, the current value. So it shows you what was, uh, that's what happens when you select the display note. Now, when we initialize this um, node 2D so that we can place it on a canvas as a node 2D, uh, we get a reference to that node label. We, re we listen, we register our handler function, listening again to this MIDI handler, MIDI note on. We set the random seed. Um, so it'll always be different every time you play. It won't play the same sequence of notes. Um, and then we select and display the notes. We run, we invoke this thing here. And we have a little bit of um, config for the delay timer. So we, uh, we get a reference here. This is actually a pretty nice way of getting that reference now. I think Godot 4 allows you to do this with the dollar sign and then the name if it matches the, uh, uh, sorry, the node name. Good reference and we can configure it here. Uh, we don't want it to start timing until we're going to trigger the timer later, but we configure it to one second by default. Um, this should not be a literal value. It should probably be a, a configuration up here, but nonetheless, there's that. And here's our handler. So once we handle the MIDI note on event, it's going to call back this function and it's going to pass in that, that MIDI info that comes origi originally from the uh, MIDI handler GD. And it's going to check a bit. It's going to look at the current note and see if the pitch class of the note that was pressed on the keyboard matches. The pitch class is just the letter name, basically with sharp in our case and some so these are called i think they're called pitch classes the reason i'm using that terminology is because it uh, distinguishes it from the octave the pitch class a is playable in many different octaves but an a4 is only is a, a very specific note and um, anyway just a small semantic thing uh, so i'm calling it a note here it's pitch class um, but I think it's important to distinguish between the two 
because it doesn't have the octave information and we're not testing that you play the correct octave we're just saying hey play the C uh, then it uh, if it was correct if they match it'll emit this signal that we can then listen for in like another um, component that'll play a sound effect for example we'll modulate the color to green so you get a little bit of visual feedback at this point um, and it's printing the console just that was the original thing that we got starts a timer so you uh, and, and awaits that timer to run so the timer again was configured to one second and it just waits for that so it kind of pausing the thing but the event loop in the game is still running waiting for that and then it'll select and display the next node so that's pretty straightforward and uh, if the nodes didn't match then it does the opposite basically it emits the note incorrect signal it modulates to red Prints that and and it just waits there until you pray, press the right press the right one. It's essentially gonna ensure that you get it correct before you move on. We call this wait for me, and I think this is a really important aspect of pedagogy, piano pedagogy in particular. Uh, that a piano teacher will say, "Okay, play that note," and they'll wait for you to play that note. Take as long as you need. There's no hurry. Okay, you played it, now let's play the next one. Uh, whereas a lot of apps, they continue to move on in rapid fire, rapid suggestion, succession. They say, oh, play this note, that, that one, that one. Whether or not you get it right or wrong. And in our little app, that's not such a big deal, but you're not actually necessarily learning. You don't have time in that moment to correct the behavior. You, in a way, learn the wrong behavior, or it takes more, I think, repetitions to get the right behavior in. And waiting, I think, is so important. And on the other hand, I've had a really bad experience with apps that are trying to teach you sheet music or repertoire. They continue, it's like you're on a treadmill, the, the music continues playing, and it's a very fast paced music. And it doesn't wait for you until you, it gets so far ahead of you that it, it'll reset. <laughs> and um, Simply Piano does this, and I've written to them about why I think that's. Uh, not really good pedagogically. It's not a good user experience, and it's it's not aligned with how piano teachers typically teach. Like sitting next to a human, sitting next to a teacher, teacher-student relationship. Uh, there's patience and waiting. Uh, we shouldn't uh, subject people uh, in the user experience to like some kind of mecha mechanical, uh, force pace um, learning environment. So I'm hoping I'm explaining this well. It's a philosophical. Uh, issue that I'll, I'll try to incorporate into the user experience here. The waiting is very important. But that's basically it. Just a few, you know, tens of lines of code and we have a, uh, a working exercise to help memorize the piano keyboard as a first step for a beginner. Our pull request here on GitHub uh, has all the current changes. And you can review that to and see what changed exactly. And um, if you'd like to get involved, we also have a few other open issues here. And this list is likely to grow as the game uh, development continues. There's a game design document that's sort of uh, describing what we're trying to achieve here, and a few discussions actually. These are the probably this is where to get involved. Uh, bring your own ideas, uh, help us choose a mascot, all those kinds of things. So yeah, this has been another live code hangout. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you're doing well. Keep on pursuing your creative passions, if it's music or programming, whatever it is. Uh, and I hope, uh, I hope you succeed and share your gifts with others. Uh, have a great day.